data report. So Power BI is basically reporting, data reporting and visualization tool. And it is like you said, it is mainly used for um, visualizations, but for what? So it basically, we are using it for gaining business intelligence. Now, what is business intelligence? So business intelligence, intelligence in itself, generalized word is like getting, someone says, hey, get some intelligence, right? So what is that? So get some ideas, get some decisions, get some smartness. So when it's applied to business in a very, very layman's language, I am um, uh, I'm telling you that uh, what it is. So in a very layman's language, it is basically uh, data decision-making abilities and how. So there are a couple of steps here. So first step is it combines information from multiple sources into a central system so that there is one or many system and it uh, gathers a lot of different data into that system. So BI uh, basically uh, organizes and anal analyzes data to prepare OLAP cubes. It can be OLAP, it cannot be OLAP as well. And we'll get into the actual classes and learn what is OLAP, what is BI in detail, uh, how really Power BI works and all those sorts of things. But to give you generalized idea, every step of business requires intelligence and every step we require some sort of analytics and I'll take you back to the history as well that how we used to collect data what sort of tools we used to use at that time and now in the era of AI we have gone so advanced and we have starting started using so many different tools so ultimately like you said uh, BI reporting tools we use for findings and visualizations. We use dashboards and reports and apps these days. Mobile apps are very, very famous. Uh, and who uses it? So executives uses it, um, CEO uses it, directors uses it. Every person, even the smallest person in the organization needs data to make informed data-based data-dependent decisions. Okay, so that's a brief overview of business intelligence. Now let's take a look at a couple of topics real quick. Uh, difference between Power BI and Tableau. Now I guess you're so convinced with Power BI, I don't have to jump into the uh, telling uh, you both the difference, but main dif difference I would, I'll just highlight that Tableau is extensive. It's vast, just like Power BI, but Power BI has, ability to integrate multiple databases, like 100 plus, and we'll, we'll walk through it real quick in a second. Another very good advantage for businesses, why Power BI is so much in de uh, demand, we'll, we'll walk through that as well, but Tableau is pretty expensive as compared to Power BI. Power BI has a free version. If you want to start practicing or using it, you can. Hey, if I'm going real quick or real fast, please stop me and I can walk you through again, okay? Raju? Sure. Okay. All right. So why Power BI? What makes Power BI unique? There are so many tools, like so many. If we compare, there's Looker from Google, there's Qlik, there's Alteryx. Um, Salesforce, Power BI, Tableau, major competent is, uh, opponent I would say is Tableau. But why Power BI? Why it is so famous among so many organizations? Because it can corporate, co it can, uh, it can combine, it can work with AI. It can enable big data. It can customize dashboards and interactive reports, like interactive. It's not just report that you prepare and give it to somebody. No, it's an interactive report. Real-time access to information. So you prepare or I prepare 
power, uh, power BI report, and that report can be integrated and access into PowerPoint presentation as well. And I give my presentation sometimes like that to my end users. So it is that advanced. Excel integration is out of question. Those who know Excel really well can learn Power BI so quickly, so easily. So that's the first starting point. On top of that, it's cost effective. So uh, to be precise, one person can use free version and be equally competent in Power BI uh, or can take a job as a Power BI developer. You guys can create your own projects and we will create our own projects based on this um, at the end of the course. Um, it's user-friendly. Like I said, it doesn't really require coding at all. Storytelling is so easy with Power BI because there are 3D visuals and um, app integrations as well. Okay. Um, to go a little bit in, into the Power BI, what we can do is we can we can customize our row and columns. We can change data types. So let's say one organization you are working with only uses SQL. Another one is using, using Azure. Third one is using SAP, SAP. Um, fourth one is using um, only Oracle, nothing else. So all of these different types of data uh, sources can be integrated into Power BI. We can, just like SQL, we can uh, work with relationships as well. We can pivot our columns. We can drill down. We can drill up. We can create filters and number of benefits. It is also very, very user-friendly. So for example, once you learn it, and if you go to your organization and say, hey, Let's have a data dependent environment. So your boss will say why and how. So you can say that, hey, data is the life and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to take a whole entire lecture on uh, data and we'll see why it is so important, just like gold, why it is so extensively, expensively required these days. Um, and and why and how how people can use it you can create a data set and give end user a permission to create their own dashboards once you learn it you'll see how how we can do that and anybody can create dashboards as per their choice and need basically okay so what is power bi power bi like you all know it's sas s a a s Raju, do you know, it's going to be an interactive class, so please don't expect me to talk all the time, okay? It's even our further classes are going to be interactive. It's not one person talking and other person is silent. It's going to be interactive. It's going to be practical based. You'll be working with me. You'll be talking with me. You'll be absolutely attentive. Okay, so what is SAAS? Any idea? Yeah, it's a software as a service. Perfect. So you understand cloud-based business, uh, cloud-based tools, right? Yeah, Azure. Perfect. Azure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Power BI is a cloud-based SaaS, like you said, software as a service tool for what? For business analysis and intelligence, and it is a product of Microsoft. So Bill Gates is the papa of Power BI. That's how I remember it. We'll go into all these uh, details of, uh, of the explanation, but not, not in the de demo. I want to show you real quick what it is, what we will be covering, how equipped you will be at the end of the session. And um, I want to show you the dashboard and report as well. I mean, if we cannot walk through dashboard, at least a report. So architecture of Power BI, just a brief overview. Data integration is right here. This is the data integration part. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, it can integrate data from SQL, uh, SAP, Oracle. There are a couple of other um, um, data sources that we use in uh, 
my my workplace simplest is pdf csv xls is you know excel txt files all these different files as well microsoft 365 you can integrate into power bi but there are pros and cons to it and we'll go through it during our class why should we use it why we shouldn't use it when to use it how to use it everything okay data transformations and cleansing that happens once we integrate the data then we load it into in-house power bi's in-house data warehouse and then we create these three things it's called reports oh my gosh i'm so not used to this uh, dashboards and scorecards and once it's created our end users can uh, utilize it so data integration data processing and data presentation power bi experience your data so cloud or on premise uh, neha sorry for the interruption can you go back to the last slide sure last slide so here uh, yeah here the scorecard meaning it's a it's it's a visualization uh, at the end of the screen or uh, how is it it is so no one knows really much about scorecards but uh, scorecards are part of power bi so it's not only uh, reports and dashboards we prepare scorecards to uh, basically review the performance uh, let's say i want to i want to review the performance of a person or a department let's say a department i want to see how sales is doing so how can I know? So I prepare a scorecard and it'll give me KPIs basically of that. So, so we use scorecards too. Not very many people uses it, but it's good to know how to use it and when to use it. So there are three, three parts to it, three parts to visualize. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, uh, once we start the course, how to do it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So cloud data and on-premises data. Uh, data can come from anywhere and Power BI has an ability to incorporate those data. Now, how many data? Let's just take a look first. There are 100 plus data sources and Power BI is... Basically, that's the thing with Power BI. You have to be updated every time because every month there are some new updates. There's something new going on with Power BI. So if you don't read, if you don't update, you're like gone. Okay, so it can be file, it can be Power Platform, it can be database of IBM, SQL Server Management, SQL, Oracle, um, Python, R scripts, we use R scripts. So R scripts as well, GitHub. You just name it and most likely it will be inside. Salesforce, um, what else? Snowflake, mm, Facebook, web data. We can incorporate web data directly as well. So, so these are, that's the main advantage why people would love Power BI. Okay, so once, it gets the data, it customizes it, and it can throw in so many different ways that end users can use it. It can be it can be incorporated to SharePoint. It can be in mobile. It can uh, the data can come out as Excel as well. We can create embedded reports. Cortana, have you all heard of Cortana? Like Siri, like Alexa. There's there's a this Microsoft baby called Cortana. Have you heard of it, Rajin? Oh, no, 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 no. That's just okay. Amazing. Like Alexa, Alexa, you it know, is, right? Is, Amazon is, has Alexa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I have come across. It was introduced uh, Windows 10, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. So... So uh, Power, Power BI has grown into the giant massive app, really, like uh, not app, a uh, tool basically. So, so these are the different uh, 
ways we can utilize it uh, in our regular day-to-day -day business life. Okay, like I said, there are so many different data sources and it's growing. There's no end to it. Okay, components of Power BI. So Power BI Desktop, Power BI Service, people call it cloud as well. We call it here service and Power BI app. So it can be used on mobile as well and you can give people access. If your company is using uh, mobile for their um, uh, employees like our company is using, then I can prepare a small app out of Power BI and give them access. Okay, so we're not going into this really, but examples of reports. So what are reports you all know? I don't think I have to walk you through the definition like I have to for some people because you're working, you know. Dashboards, like you all mentioned, it's a big canvas. It's a huge canvas. You can create and paint it the way you like. That's how I usually tell my students. It's it's so beautiful that you can create just four or five, or you can create n number of visuals, or you can give the liberty to your end user and they can use it the way they like. All right, so examples of scorecards. Like you wanted to see, this is a scorecard. It's basically for KPI measurements. Uh, this is how it would look. Okay, all right. No one will teach you elsewhere storytelling and customizations, but I would love to go through this at the end of our course or sometime in the middle. I'll keep, keep telling you all that how, why it's so important not just to prepare reports and dashboards, but also storytelling. You have to create that ability to tell the story to your end users. Otherwise, your dashboard will be amazing. It looks really nice. It's data enriching. It's very appealing. But at the end, your end user will gain nothing. Why? Because it's just numbers. It doesn't make sense to them. You have to make sense to yourself and then teach them and tell them, hey, this data means this. Hey, this visual represents this. So for that, you have to know why we are using that chart, why we are using metrics, why we're not using simple table. And then you can elaborate and say, hey, this is the drill down option and you can use it. I'm going to walk you through instead of just talking. Okay, so, so any questions so far from anyone? Uh, Rakesh, if you cannot hear, you can probably just uh, shoot me the chats, and I will. I can. Uh, I can look at it. Okay. Neha, I have a question. Uh, please don't mind me asking. If you can go back to the slide number. Uh, slide number. Yeah. Uh, Which one? This one. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. No, not this. Come back again. A uh, step behind. Yeah. So, uh, uh, coming to the last point. So, you are loading the data from different sources and uh, representing into uh, you know different uh, visualizations, right? Embedded, uh, Otana and uh, Infinite, right? So. How does it work? Like, uh, are you going to give your voice command and then pull up the report on the screen, or uh, you are going to give the voice command and create the report? How how does it work? No, so so Cortana we haven't started using here uh, as much, but what Power BI does is basically it uses natural language query, and it it is giving access to the voice but it's still in progress, really. It hasn't been used as much. Uh, embedded, we are using it, and I'm going to show you in this course how we can embed our reports, how we can, uh, how we can prepare a visual and how to get that data from the visual in Excel that will be taught in the course. Connecting and integrating with SharePoint, if your uh, web, web basically SharePoint, if your company is using SharePoint, 
I can just show you. But if not, then this is not really that important. Mobile, it's very simple. I can show you in two minutes, really. So these are the ways that we can see our data out after the visualizations. But oh, this is only for visualization, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so by giving the voice command, we can get the data on screen. Uh, there are Q and A's and that's what they call that once, once this is in practice with a lot of organizations, right now there are 500K, uh, uh, yeah, 500K organizations using Power BI basically all across the world. And it's 180 countries if I'm not mistaken. But once no one is using Q&A features as much as uh, they would like. So Microsoft would like them to use it. Once everyone will start using it, that's what they are saying that um, Cortana or AI um, will take into the action. They're still working on a lot of ML and AI options as well. But this is still in progress. They haven't really uh, come up with ideas. Um, oh, lot of uh, ideas. This is an AI, AI symbol? No, this is not an AI symbol. No, the infinity um, uh, underneath uh, Cortana. Under, yeah, this is an infinite. So they are searching the ways to explore what else can be done really using AI and ML. Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry for the questions. No problem. That's okay. I would love questions. So feel free to ask. Thanks. So this is what I have gone through it. So can we switch? Okay, so these are the customers basically uh, of Power BI. Uh, I'm walking through fast because I want to cover a lot of things and time is an issue. Uh, storytelling, I just told you about. So Honeywell, a huge company, Coke, Coca-Cola, a very big one. Uh, Infosys, Adobe, uh, there are so many, HP. Lots and lots, like I said, 180 countries have access and they are utilizing Power BI and there are 500K plus users. I mean, organizations using it. Any question? If not, then we'll just go through uh, a quick Power BI look. This is how our report looks. Ever seen Power, Power BI reports, Raju? Uh, yeah, I did in once. I mean, uh, once in my uh, experience, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so this is basically a stored data. One, uh, uh, there are three stores, different ones, and uh, we are trying to create a report out of it. So, these, I will walk you through. I'll walk you through each of the tabs on top, what's home, what's insert, modeling, view, optimize, how to get data. So let me just show you a brief example that these are all the data sources that we can use. Then they have defined it in the file, what all you can use as a file, what all you can use as databases. Fabric, so Fabric is another very good uh, thing that people use here to in integrate their data. Power Platform, so it can be data words, it can be data flows. Azure, uh, Blob, Synapse, uh, I guess they had, uh, they had Databricks as well, yes. They do have Databricks, Cosmos DB. So all of these can be integrated. Online services, like I said, Salesforce, we use it day in and day out and it's amazing. It's working amazing. <sighs> um, 
I don't know what your organization is using, but if you find out when we'll start working on it, we'll try to see if we can find some data and we'll try to integrate and use it that way. Other Hadoop, uh, R script. Healthcare, data, healthcare organizations uses R, Python. Uh, even if we, for example, we don't want to integrate, but if we have, uh, and I'll walk you through during the class, if we have license, a premium license, we can use n number of R and Python visuals as well, coming from those two uh, sources. Okay, so these are the different uh, data types. Let's try to use, um, I have one, so we don't have to get into this one, but I want to create, for example, a report, start from the scratch, and we don't want to use this one. But, but let me walk you through. Okay, so this is the report. This is the report page. Uh, here are the paints. We call it paints. So this, this is a filter paint. This is a visualization paint, and this is a data paint. Uh, I don't want to get into the details as it'll be another one hour class just for uh, explaining what it is and how we can start. But for the demo, I want to I want to show you these parts. So our data, once it's integrated, it will pop up here. Everything. Once we transform it, once we clean, clean it, the entire cleansing process is done. It will appear here. So this is what we say in, in uh, Power BI, garbage in, garbage out. So if your data is not of a good quality, if it's garbage, your reports are going to come out as garbage. If your data is really good, your reports will be very, very nice. So, so even it doesn't really matter how small or big your data is. The data has to be nicely transformed. It has to be clean. It has to be uh, ready to use once it is, once we integrate it. Okay. All right. So that's our uh, data pane. So here we will see all our tables and our fields, what we can use to create all these amazing visuals. These are the visuals we can use, and these are not the limited visuals. We can click on this and get more visuals. And I will walk you through. There are so many. There are, I think, 3,000 plus visuals that we can integrate, even with free license. So we don't really need to have pro or premium licenses. But what is more important is knowing this is let's say donut chart. So why, why should we use donut chart here and not um, funnel, funnel chart? Why? So that's more important than using 3000 visuals because you're, you're not just using it. You will be explaining the data as well. Okay, so like I said, you can, you can integrate this and it can come out to um, to your data as well. I mean, um, to Excel. Okay, I'm so confused right now what to tell you all uh, and how to how to proceed further. But uh, but let's start from here. So this is filter pane. Like I said, what does filters do? Filter is basically. Uh, basically linked with our data. So I want to see how many products do they have. So here, either I can have a table or I can go to filter and basically see how many products they have. Same way is with product type or stores. Okay, uh, when once we get into the class, I will explain everything in detail. This is just an overview. So this is filters and, and here are the slices. So slices and filters work similarly. There's a minute difference, 
which we'll walk through in the class. So whenever we need to slice and dice our data, we use slices. So any, any uncommon visual here that, that is prompting out that this doesn't fit really well? Raju, is there any? This is a map and, and obviously it has a name, but but right now it's not important to know. Any visual that's that's not um, visually appealing, it's looking off, it's looking like it doesn't fit really well. Are you with me? Raju, it's a question. Okay, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess you are, you're away or something. Okay, so this is the visual basically, it shouldn't be here, which which is kind of off because do you see the, the data points are so small, it doesn't make sense. So these kind of visuals really attract people uh, and say, uh, and tell them that, hey, this is not a nice dashboard. So it's very important to pick your data and visuals as per the user's need and what you think you can basically tell your story behind, behind that data. So you can just delete this one. These are the cards. These are the maps. Uh, this is called tree map. So let's say you want to this is this is how you want to start when you have a really small place or a crunch you can click on the plus sign click on the value it will show you the store location here is the category name these are the stores basically and these are the products so there are 29 products in in three stores once you click on this plus sign it will show you product category. So in this store, Astoria store, there are coffee beans, coffees, loose teas, and that's it. Let's see what do we have in Health Kitchen. So in Health Kitchen, we have the same, but we want to see lowest data. So how do we see it? So, so there are other ways to see that. And then we have lower Manhattan. That's another store location what are the products over there exist. So, so that's tree map. Um, so, so I am not walking uh, you through all of these, but this, this is another very, very interesting thing to know. It's called multi card and here it is multi row card. Just this is, this is also a card and this is also a card, but you can use it for varieties of data visualizations when and why and how that is that can be taught in the class only because it's a long nice subject okay all right so any questions so far yeah so is it a real-time data i can't hear you oh is it a real-time data Okay, so what do you mean by real time data? I mean, uh, uh, are you currently prepared? I mean, the, is this a data where uh, used by an organization or it is prepared by you? This, uh, this is the data uh, which is used by some organization, not mine, but where I used to get take trainings. Oh, okay. No problem. No, I just wanted to understand. Uh, this is how uh, it 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 will be represented in the real time working scenarios. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is how it can be uh, presented in the real time scenarios. You can add one more or two more. You can minimize. You can customize the way you like. You can just minimize this and uh, add some more here. You can just basically cancel this category, had to have this small one and add one more chart or a graph or a, a pie chart or whatever you like, basically. 
So, so, so yeah. Um, this is basically a report. So once it's prepared, we have to publish it and we have to put it in the service, which is a cloud. And that's where we can give everyone access and all other people can see what we have done. And that's where we create our dashboard. So dashboards are not created here. We create reports here. We create data set here. But dashboards are created once we publish, it's on the cloud. Make sense? Even for the uh, need to, even for the free version, we need to use the cloud. Yes, yes, yes. You can't create dashboard here. There is no way Power BI give us access to create a dashboard without using a uh, using a service without using a cloud. Okay. All right. So I'll walk you through what are these. It's a report view. This is a report view, basically. What's table view? This is a table view, how to use it. This is the relationship view. There are only, there's only one table, so we haven't created a relationship. What's DAX? DAX is a whole different topic. We'll touch base it. Um, so Power BI is a vast topic. Okay, I want to also tell you about the course content real quick. Uh, like literally in five minutes because we are running out of time. So what all we can cover? Can you all see? So introduction to Power BI, this will this will try to cover uh, majority of things we have tried to cover. Whatever is left will cover during our class. Okay, creating Power BI reports and auto filters, like I showed you a filter, but I want to also show you what is auto filter. We have just just like glanced it. We haven't even gone into the detail of it. What, uh, what, how do we create a multiple pages? What's the advantage of it? All of those things. Report visualizations and properties. So how to use that big canvas? What we can do off, uh, based off of that? How we can uh, utilize our uh, columns and charts and maps so all of these how to how to use tagged column chart how to use bar chart when to use it why to use it when to use map and how to make it more uh, visually appealing uh, hierarchies and drill down so i don't know if I, I i think i haven't showed you but but drill down so this is a drill down and we can, so here you're seeing 2023, quarter one, quarter two, and all the months. Once you drill up, you'll see just quarter-wise data. If you see up, you'll only see a year-wise data. So this is a drill down options. And there's a whole more story behind it and how to use guidance behind it. This is just an overview. What is drill down in, in a one second, literally. And hierarchies, hierarchies are another topic for uh, for a long time that we have to see it in detail. I cannot explain it um, just just by just by talking, but that's that's those are very important topics. Power query. So people do call it M language as well. Uh, so we will be working intensely on this one because this is where our data transformations and cleansing happens. I'm not going in detail because we are again running short of time. Okay. Uh, part two. But Neha, uh, okay. Is it all power query is also called as DAX query or it is different? It's different. It's completely different. DAX is an expression. So what is DAX? DAX is a query language. It's different. We'll, we'll walk through it. What is DAX? Uh, it's the full form of DAX is basically uh, I'll have to I'll have to tell you the entire story behind it, but it's a query language. What we generate in Power BI, all the calculations comes majority of them comes of DEX. So like SQL, SQL is a query language. Same way for Power BI, DEX is a query language. 
to generate calculations to to format our data, which is not inbuilt. There are lots of text functions. Those are inbuilt. Let's let me show you. So these are inbuilt. End of quarter, end of month, previous quarter, previous month. All of these are inbuilt DEX functions. Very high level, very advanced. Rank, rank X, calculate all of these. But let's start with the basics. What it is, why we have to use it, how we can use it, how we can format a date. So like I said, for example, uh, I just want to show them these months only it doesn't come straight away i have to put dex into it so that i can only see these and not the numbers january can be written as one february can be written as two three so when you use date here you will be seeing it as date like 01 01 2024 but we don't want to see it that way we want to see it this way so how to see it so dex play it's role or part into creating this. Make sense? What is that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so that's text. Uh, Power BI development, uh, deployment and cloud. Uh, so we will be working intensely on the service side as well. Then I want to show all of you how to use basically uh, workspaces because very important. When you start using it, you will be you will be seeing workspaces as well. Uh, you have to give everyone. You have to create your own workspace first, and then all the refresh schedules all the um, user access, everything is done through the workspaces. You can do it report-wise as well, but workspaces, it's it's very important to know the workspace. Else you haven't reached that advanced level, that's how it's considered. And then finally, gateway. So gateway is when you actually connect your data, you can see what's connected, you can, um, if you want to put any security levels there, you can. Okay, there's another very important topic that we will be covering, which is called row level security. And row level security can be done in multiple ways. So static and dynamic. So we will be seeing both ways in our course. Uh, storytelling, I've already covered. So, so that's it really. Four or five more minutes if, if you have any questions. Uh, if not, I guess we can just end it here. Uh, I'm good. Thanks, Neha. It was a brief and uh, great uh, interacting with you. Thank you, Raju. Same here. We can have another demo if you, and we can pick a topic and we can uh, get into seeing it if you like tomorrow or whenever. Uh, but I just wanted to give up uh, an overview so I didn't get into the detail of anything. I think you can you can converse with uh, with uh, Chindana and uh, and we can we can uh, we can plan something, okay. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Okay, Raju, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.